In the following tutorial, we'll be going over how to set up your GitHub Enterprise Managed User Account against your Okta as an identity provider. Now, before we begin, you will be getting an email, for example, stating that your admin account has been created and you've been added as an owner. Now, a common mistake I see across the setup is that most people just go ahead and click on set your password. Now, the problem with this is that let's say if I do and I'm already logged into GitHub, like I'm going to be doing right now, I'm already logged into GitHub. It actually goes ahead and might show me that I need to reset the password for a user that is not the one that I'm trying to reset. So my advice with this is just for preventing errors. You want to make sure you're using either a different browser like I'm doing right here, I'm jumping between Chrome and Microsoft Edge. And you wanna start this process within a browser where you're not logged in into GitHub. Or you can simply log out if you're already logged in into GitHub and start it from there. It's mostly just to prevent any possibilities of issues when it comes to resetting the admin user password. Please keep in mind as well that the admin user password is not the same as your current personal GitHub account. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and start the process of resetting my password. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my password here. And once done, I'm gonna click on set password. Now that I have set up my password, I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Now that I've logged in, I'm inside my GitHub Enterprise Managed User account as an admin. Now the first step that you want to do when setting this up is we're going to head over to the right and click on my user icon. From here, I'm going to go ahead and click on settings. I'm going to scroll all the way down, click on developer settings. From developer settings, I'm going to click on personal access token. I'm going to use the classic token at this time, and I'm going to click on generate new classic token. The reason we need this token is for the SEIM integration for user provisioning. So I'm going to go ahead and call this um, Okta SCIM provisioning. And I'm going to set the expiration date for now for 90 days. My advice is that you do allow it to be about a year or more or even no expiration it really comes up to your own security preferences and your own compliance for now i'm just going to do 30 days as i'm doing, doing this demonstration is how we go through the setup so i'm going to scroll all the way down and we do want to grant our user access with full admin enterprise capabilities i'm going to select this and i'm going to generate that token now that that is done what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this token and I'm going to paste it in my notepad or Visual Studio. It really comes up to what you want to do with it. I'm going to just go ahead and paste it here as I will be needing this later on. Now I'll jump back into GitHub and since I've already created this token, I'm going to go ahead and go back into my enterprise by clicking on my user icon and then your enterprise. Now from here, I'm gonna go into my left side menu bar and click on identity provider. From identity provider, you have two options, OIDC for single sign-on and SAML. Um, in this case, I'm using Okta, so I'm gonna go ahead and use SAML to set this up. I'm gonna click on add SAML configuration. At this point, I'm gonna jump into Okta so I can start setting up my application so I can complete my setup. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna switch into Okta. And from within Okta, I'm gonna click under Applications. I'm gonna go into the App Catalog. And from the App Catalog on the search bar, I'm gonna search for GitHub. 
Now, you will notice that a significant amount of applications come up. However, the one that we're looking for is specifically for enterprise managed users. So I'm going to go ahead and click GitHub. Enterprise manage users. There we go. And now you can see that a new application comes up with a green icon. We're going to go ahead and click this application. It's important that you select this one for this setup. Others will not work. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one. Now you do want to make sure that the applications does sustain SAML and SCIM for user provisioning. As well, it is highly important that your Okta tenant does sustain life cycle management. If your Okta tenant does not have life cycle management, this setup will not work. And you will need to reach out to your Okta support to see how you can enable life cycle management. And with that being said, I'm going to click on add integration. From within the add integration, I'm now taken to where I can start setting this up. As an application label, you're going to have the name GitHub Enterprise Managed Users. Everything looks okay and standard here. So I click on done. Now, even before I start doing anything, I'm going to head over where it says sign on tab. From within the sign on tab, you're going to notice there's a couple of settings here. Now, what you want to do here is click on edit. And from within edit, you're going to see that now you have the option to input your enterprise name. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to jump back into GitHub and I'm going to copy that enterprise name. That enterprise name usually is followed by github.com forward slash enterprises and then the name of your enterprise, or it's the same one that you have right here in case you have not changed it. I personally like to use the one from the URL directly as it is just a better practice based on the endpoint that I'm reaching out to. So I'm going to go ahead and get this directly from my URL. Now I'm going to go back into Okta and paste my enterprise name right here. Make sure you don't have any spaces before or after. Once done, I'm going to click on save. Now that I've saved those settings, I'm going to go ahead and click on view SAML setup instructions. Now from here, Okta makes it really easy for us to set this up as they already provide us with all the information we need to fill out in GitHub. So I'm going to start by copying the sign on URL. I'm going to head back into GitHub and paste it right here where it says sign on URL. I'm going to go back into Okta. I'm going to copy the issuer, head back into GitHub, paste it under the issuer field. And finally, I'm going to go back into Okta, copy the public certificate, and then go back into GitHub and paste the public certificate under public certificate. As a good practice, I like to expand this a little bit just to make sure there's no additional spacing or anything that shouldn't be added. And now it's important you do not click on test SAML as this will not work right now. The reason that is is because if I click on test SAML, GitHub will try to reach out to Okta. And when it reaches Okta based on this endpoint, the problem is that this application does not have any user assigned yet. So you might get a 403 unable to um, unauthorized or you might get authentication failures. So now I'm going to hit over the assignment tab. And from here, I'm going to add my user. Click on sign, assign people. I'm going to select my user and click save and go back. Now, once I do, this is pretty much just for me to add my user at this moment so that I'm able to overall just enable the endpoint. Now that I've done this part of the setup, I'm going to go ahead and enable SAML on GitHub. So I'm going to go back into GitHub and click on test SAML configuration. This will redirect me to Okta, where I'm going to go ahead and input my password. Now, 
Now that I've been able to validate my SAML configuration, you're gonna see a message stating your SAML provider settings have been validated. Remember, save your changes. Now that I've done this, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Save SAML Settings. Immediately, GitHub provides me with single sign-on recovery codes. Now, these codes are important because the moment that I enable SAML, I will be needing to log in through SSO. However, if at any point in time I need to log in with my admin account, I will be able to do so using any of the following codes. It is a good practice that you download them and keep them on a secure location, or you can copy them and still keep them on a secure location. It's really up to you. The moment that I hit on any of these options, I am now able to enable SAML authentication. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Enable SAML Authentication. And once done, SAML has been enabled. It's very important that you do not log, log out of this portal because we still need to set up SEIM for user provisioning. So we're gonna leave this here for now and I'm gonna go back into Okta to complete my setup. Now within Okta, I'm gonna go under provisioning so I can start setting up SEIM. Within provisioning, I'm gonna click on configure API integration. I'm gonna enable the API integration. And at this point, I'm being asked for that token that we created at the start of our setup. So I'm gonna go into Visual Studio Code where I copied my token. I'm gonna to copy that, go back into Okta and paste my token there. Now that the endpoint is live from a SAML perspective, when I test my API credentials, this should work. If you try to do this before enabling the SAML endpoint in GitHub, this will most probably fail. So it's important that we follow the steps as they're being provided. I'm gonna go ahead now and click on test API credentials. And I can see that the GitHub Enterprise Managed Users was verified successfully, meaning that Okta is able to contact my endpoint using my token. So now I'm able to click on save. Once saved, the UI will refresh. And at this point, I can click on edit and enable the creation of users, update attributes, and deactivate users. All of this is part of SCIM. And finally, click on save. Now, I do want you to notice that the three icons right here are now all green. At the beginning of our setup, they weren't. This pretty much means that there is the possibility of authentication, but now user provisioning and the provisioning has been enabled. Now, at this point, if you go back under your assignments, you're going to see that the user is letting us know, hey, this application or this user was provisioned before we actually enabled skin provisioning. So now what I gotta do is pretty much click on provision user and then click okay to provision that user. Now, what I'm gonna do with this user though is click on edit because I'm gonna have a couple of new things that do need remapping. And pretty much what I have to do is set the role of my user. And since this is my admin user, it is important that you select enterprise owner. Once I select enterprise owner, I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Now my user is gonna be provisioned as the enterprise owner. If I had not done this, my user would have been provisioned as a normal member and when I would not have had any of the admin related capabilities. Now, Okta provisions users on a 40 to 45 minute cron job. So if I were to, for example, assign a group of users, in this case, the admins group, this group will be provisioned on a 40 to 45 minutes cron based on my skim. However, Okta does provide you the ability of pushing groups. Let's say you just wanted to push a user or group and you do not really wanted to wait for that provisioning to happen. You can select, for example, your group. In this case, I'm gonna look for my admins. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now, this pretty much enables me to do the pushing on my groups for instant provisioning, and you can see the status pushing. Now, it is important to mention that while I am provisioning a group, you're unable to mass provision roles, meaning that the default role will always be members. 
let's say that if you wanted these users that are now being provisioned, for example, my user Mona Octocad is part of my admins. However, the way that this user was provisioned was as a normal member. So what I have to do now from here is change the role mapping to an enterprise owner, billing manager, user. It really comes down to what I wanted to do. In this case, I'm also going to be pushing this user as an enterprise owner. Unfortunately, there is really no way of pushing uh, an admin group, an admin group, and having all that group's roles be enterprise owners. You will have to do this user by user. The default, nevertheless, is user. But if you wanted to change those attributes, you're going to have to go into the user specifically and change the role. Once done, I'm going to go ahead and click on save. Now at this point, our EMU tenant has already been set up. So I can go ahead and leave Okta for now. I'm going to go back into GitHub. Now within GitHub, if you go under people, you're going to see that your users have already been provisioned. And you're going to see that your enterprise lug has already been added. In this case, it is using my username underscore enterprise lug, which is what you're seeing here which is Jack G. Cafferty underscore SSO EMU or Mana Octocad underscore SSO EMU. And then of course we have my setup admin. Now the setup admin user account is important because if we go back into identity providers, this is the only user that can actually turn off SAML. So if I go ahead now and I'm going to copy this URL for simplicity, and what I'm going to do from here is that I'm going to sign out. If I go back into my enterprise, you can already see I have been logged in with my SSO EMU account provisioned by Okta. I'm going to do that again because I do want to show you how would this work if, let's say, you're not pasting the URL like I did. I'm going to log out, go back into GitHub, click on Sign On, and then I'm going to do input my username. So the moment that I immediately do that underscore, I want you to look at this. You see how right now it just says Sign In? But the moment I input that underscore, it immediately identifies that this is an EMU account. And it says sign in with your identity provider. So when I click on sign in with your identity provider, it automatically sends me to log in against my GitHub Playground underscore EMU, which is the account we created. Now that I've authenticated against it, if I go under Enterprises and I go into Identity Provider, since I'm not using my admin account as the setup admin that we provided for the initial setup, you will see this option is grayed out. Meaning that if you wanted to turn off SSO, you will need to use the setup admin account. This is done for security reasons. If I click on edit SAML configuration, I'm not able to change the sign on URL or the issuer, but I can update the public certificate in case at any point in time this expires. Now, since you're using Okta, it's pretty beneficial that once you assign your users to an application like I've done here, if you go into the users and user dashboard, when they log in, they will be able to see that application. And when they click on it, they will be redirected to log in against um, your GitHub Enterprise Cloud account. Now, with that being said, these are the steps to set up GitHub Enterprise Managed Users using Okta.